So I wanted to share with you a heated flooring system I installed in this basement bathroom. Basement bathrooms are always cold. It's something that I felt was absolutely needed in a bathroom if you're gonna use it all the time, especially in the winter climates where we are. I found this system on Amazon called Warming System. By the time you finish this video, you'll feel comfortable about installing it and you'll save yourself hundreds of dollars. So the system that I found was on Amazon. We'll put links down below. It's called Warming System. They have different models of it, but I purchased the loose wire system mainly because my bathroom floor was not level and I was going to self level anyway so I got the loose wire it comes with cable guides the router cable one of the features I thought was really great is they give you this little monitor that you attach to your wire and basically if you were to cut your wire or do something by accident it signals to you that something went wrong. So I think this was a great little extra feature they had in the kit. The kit really came with the wire, the cable guides, the thermostat, and this little monitor. I mean, to have an all-inclusive package for a couple hundred bucks, I thought was fantastic. And not only that, but they have systems that are go from 10 square feet all the way to 150 square feet in five square foot increments. So that's one thing you, a lot of people do when they install heated flooring systems, they usually end up having too much wire and you're not able to cut this wire. You have to make it fit within your bathroom. Let's go through how you need to measure your bathroom for picking the right system. So as far as measuring, you need to exclude some things within your bathroom. When you're looking at the design of your bathroom, make sure you exclude the area of your toilet. Typically a two foot by two foot area, exclude that from the actual square footage of your bathroom. You don't want that wire to be too close to your toilet flange and obviously heating up your wax ring and, and causing problems. You also, if you had a regular vanity that went all the way to the ground, you don't want it to be underneath of that vanity. In this situation, we had a floating vanity, so we have heated floor everywhere. If you had a standard vanity, you want to exclude the area that's underneath of that vanity. You're basically keeping the wire two inches away from the edge of the wall. That's not going to be a whole lot of square footage, but you want to account for a square foot or two to keep it away from the wall. Now, in this system, which I was excited to do, is that we actually ended up doing the shower floor as well, because this is a fairly big shower. It's basically four by four, and I wanted to have heating in here as well. So I brought the heating up over the curb and into the shower. You always want to make sure that you have a little bit of room around your drain. You don't want to have the wire too close to your drain, excluding approximately a square foot out of the center of that would do it. Again, making sure that you exclude the toilet area, the vanity area, and any plumbing vent, or if you had a ductwork vent, you would wanna leave an area away from there. Subtract that from your area, and then, like I said, you can get these in five square foot increments, so you should be able to easily find the system that would fit your bathroom. The first thing I did to prep for this is to make sure that I had a dedicated circuit for my heated flooring system. You always wanna make sure that you get a dedicated circuit all the way to your electric panel for a heated flooring system. Anything with a heating source, you don't want to be attaching to existing wiring in your bathroom. So I ran a 20 amp wire to my sub panel, basically a 12 2 gauge wire. We did a 120 volt system on this. I put in a metal box, a larger mud ring box that allowed me to have more room within the box for my thermostat wires and all the wires that it was gonna be housing it. I ran conduit down. Conduit is, is an easy path to fish your wires in because you're gonna have your drywall up before you install this system. So prepping the electrical is pretty much the number one thing you wanna do so that you can easily run your heated wiring into the box. So after our drywall was in and we had our electrical prepped, we went ahead and installed the cable guides. They're just little plastic cable guides to run your wires, to space them properly. They would come in 12 inch lengths and you can just cut them down to fit the size of your room. So we installed them with a hot glue gun. So we ran our wires, spacing about three inches, keeping two inches away from the wall, staying away from our toilet. But what we also did was go up over the curb. So you wanna make sure when you go up over a curb that you basically isolate everything with thin set. When we were doing our mud bed, we installed the cable within the mud bed all at the same time. It's a little bit challenging to get the wire spaced properly within the, the mud pan, but if you take your time and pack everything nicely it works out beautifully once all the cables were set you, you always want to make sure that none of them are touching each other that they have the three inch spacing you don't want to be wrapping up the wires to each other everything has to be separated so using additional hot glue or whatever it takes to separate them is the way to go and then we just floor leveled over our entire system the product that I used on this particular one was called Ardex T1000 it was kind of an affordable floor leveler made by Ardex you had to make sure that you primed your 
surface before installing it. The primer after the cables were installed, we basically just used a brush, the brush in our primer, and then we floor leveled it. Three or four hours later, we were able to start waterproofing over this entire shower system and floor. As far as electrical testing of your system. This is very important. You always want to do this. As soon as you get the package, use a, a simple ohm reader on the label. It'll give you a range of what that reading should be. These don't cost a whole lot of money either. You can get this at your local Home Depot or Lowe's for like 20 bucks. But basically, you're just switching this to your ohm reading. You're touching your wires to your cables and you're just making sure that the reading shows the rating that it's on there. There's a label on your wire that will give you a range of what the ohm reading should be. So you want to number one, test it when you first get it out of the package before you even not take the cable off the, the roll, you want to test it. Number two is after you run your wires through your entire system, you want to test it. And then finally, after you're done floor leveling and installing a towel, you want to test it one more time just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with your cable. The real thing that gives you peace of mind is that if you have this connected to your wires the whole time and you're not hearing any, any siren, then you're pretty much good to go. Heated flooring systems over concrete should have a thermal break. We did not do that in this video basically due to budget and height difference. A thermal break would basically be something that just isolate your concrete. So whether that's insulation or an insulation mat of some sort that will prevent the entire concrete floor from warming. Keep that in mind if you want to make things more efficient to do that. But I have to say I'm really impressed with the uniform heat of this. We only have this set on 60 degrees and it feels tremendous in here. If you're doing a shower, it is recommended by warming system to have a separate wire that you've fully use in the shower. So you can use a cable outside and then cable in the shower. Main reason for that is if anything were to happen to the shower cable, you would not be able to repair that cable in the shower. So having separate wires, if it, if it went bad, then at least you have heating out here. But we just did one continuous cable in here. Again, a budget thing. I hope these tips helped you out. Give us a thumbs up if they have. Helps other people find this video. Check out the links below. We have the links to this system below. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.